the Borgon has long been my recommended steel ship. I don't think there's any better ship that you can get for steel, unless you're just someone who doesn't enjoy battleships or heavy cruiser play. Other than that, I think that this should be your first steel ship. And now that the incomparable is out for steel, I really wanted to see if my opinion would change since that ship has some very, very strong gimmicks. And what makes the Borgone so strong also is gimmicks. This is essentially a tier nine. This is the Alsace at tier 10, except you have better dispersion, better reload, reload booster, better speed. Like there's a lot of things that have been upgraded on this ship to make it a tier 10 and make it so good. And I think you saw right there why I think this ship is so amazing. The reload booster combined with the better dispersion, the reload, you're going to be incredibly dangerous on a flank, catching people's broadsides. That's really where this ship is incredibly good. And with its speed, you can almost always get to the flank. There's really no situation where you're caught in a position where you can't get some broadsides. And if you are, because it does happen rarely, the HE is good enough to essentially burn down anything. <laughs> There's very few situations where I feel like I'm at a disadvantage in the Borgo. And that really has not been my experience with the Incomparable. The full review is going to be coming soon, but the Incomparable is not a ship you should be getting over the Borgone. They're both tier 10 battleships, but the Borgone is just better, in my opinion. There's really not a lot of competition here. They both have somewhat improved concealment, and the Incomparable has that. Better concealment, it's got similar-ish speed with speed boosts and that. Where Borgone gets more guns, and a faster reload, the Incomparable gets less guns and a slightly longer reload than something like the Shikishima. So it's really tough for me to recommend that since six gun battleships can be so frustrating. Where 12 gun battleships, you see a broadside, you're probably going to do a ton of damage just by volume of fire. And of course, when you have a reload booster on these 12 guns and you catch a broadside battleship, that's two back-to-back -back 20k salvos in the span of 10 seconds. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's just better. I, I wanted to see what Borgone was like again. I haven't played the ship for quite some time. Since I've been trying to play ships other than battleships, maybe some other tiers as well recently. And with trying to figure out if I wanted to recommend the Incomparable, I figured I should, you know, be playing the ships that I'm comparing it against. And it's just so much more comfortable to play the Borgone, even in a position like this, where we're pushing into a Yu Yang, an Annapolis, an Izumo. You're going to see eventually that there's a Fletcher on our flank as well, including a Minotaur. There's a lot here, and Borgone is not known to be a pushing ship. And yet, it's so much more comfortable to play this in a pushing position than the incomparable. It feels so much more tanky, less fragile, and that when I shoot something, I'm probably gonna get a bunch of damage. Um, the timing on this could not have been worse though, as we're shooting a Minotaur, <laughs> talking about the consistency of the guns, and we get, what, 8K? <laughs> but trust me, in general, it's, it's much more consistent, whether that's down to the reload or the more the more shells you're putting out. Pushing in like this, of course, is a really, really, really bad idea in the Borgone. So we need to get to an island very, very quickly here. Unfortunately, my two friendly destroyers are kind of wandering around on the A-line. Uh, I'm not sure what's, what's so interesting up there, but we need to get to this island. And this is really a scary position since we've used our heal and we only have 40k HP left. In the Borgone and the Incomparable, you don't get that tier 10 battleship health pool. That's really the biggest issue with this uh, type of battleship. You get some of the armor, you get the guns, you get some speed, you get some gimmicks in both of these ships, but the HP pool. And there's a lot of deadly ships out there when it comes to HE spam and torpedoes. I'm not sure why I never really encountered Yu Yang torpedoes uh, during this push, but I got very lucky to not have to deal with that at all. So we're barely going to live here on account of getting to this next island. 
and it's a good thing we managed to get here since the enemy has a Republic and a Thunderer coming back. Eventually we'll see the Thunderer, but he'll be he'll be back soon enough. They've kind of collapsed back to their base. So Borgone is definitely a ship that has to worry about these pushing into multiple ships, right? You can't just go anywhere you want and do whatever you want to. But like I said, you don't really play like that because you have this speed. You can always get a broadside. And fast forwarding just a few minutes here, actually probably even less than a few minutes, we're already catching more people's broadside as we push out from behind this island, catching the thunder as he's coming back. So even when there's ships moving to try and counter your position, it's very easy to get undetected due to the somewhat improved concealment and the speed to get onto people's flanks. And of course, reload boosters are incredibly useful when you catch someone broadside. Unfortunately though, dispersion on all battleships is going to troll you sometimes, so you can't, we're not quite gonna get this Thunderer killed, but it still proves the point that this ship is incredibly versatile, and even in its seemingly weakest scenario, it still manages to do incredibly well. So far, Borgone has been my highest average damage battleship, and I believe that makes it the highest average damage ship that I have ever played in this game. So it's it's been really good for a really long time, and it's a ship that I'm kind of surprised didn't really receive many nerfs since it came out, since it really is that good. A lot of other ships we've seen get either removed or nerfed or both for being so good. This ship I actually find to be even better than Thunderer for just personal averages go. And that's probably down to the Thunderer having less shells and less speed to reposition onto flanks. That's how good I think the Borgone is. I think I can compare it to any tier 10 battleship and Borgone would pretty much be at least as good or come out on top. And even in situations where you have to push in and try and find a destroyer, well, this time we get lucky with the Annapolis able to radar. The ship is quite quick and very maneuverable, so getting some torpedoes to land on the Borgone is a little bit difficult considering its rudder shift and immense speed. The only real issue is the long range AP. That's really the only issue I see with this ship outside of close range armor and some of the 32 millimeter pen HE spam that you gotta worry about. But again, you can easily get out of situations like that. The long range AP is just where it struggles since it tends to lose a lot of its velocity at range since it's only 380 millimeter guns and you're going to be bouncing off of 27 millimeters armor. So four bounces there on a broadside Annapolis that we didn't quite lead enough. The shells slow down and they're not big enough caliber to overmatch very much. But other than that, this ship is easily one of the best tier 10s in the game and certainly one of the best battleships you can get. So that's where I think this ship is still going to be my number one recommended ship when it comes to steel. It's just so good. I feel so confident in every situation I find myself in. I click battle and I basically know I'm going to have a good game in this ship. And there's not very many battleships that I can say that for. Now, as far as I have this ship built up, this is the way I have my commander at the moment. There are some tweaks that I've done in the past where I give up turret traverse and take something like vigilance or maybe even priority target if you feel you need that for situational awareness. But other than that, I think this is the way you want it. Gun feeder is amazing since you're probably going to be swapping between the HE and the AP if you're not quite so confident in your repositioning to get broadsides. The Adrenaline Rush is incredibly strong as you get lower HP. You can get near a 20 second reload without your reload booster active. Um, having extra healing is very useful, but of course concealment and fire prevention are the most important on most battleships these days. The equipment is something you can decide for yourself really when it comes to this slot in particular. I've been enjoying steering gears, kind of playing on the move, staying at speed, and then using my improved rudder shift to make myself very difficult to hit. You can see 13.3 second rudder shift is tough to hit when somebody has speed boost active, constantly playing with their rudder and their speed. It's very difficult to hit and I think is quite useful. 
If you're playing more of the kiting stationary position style, definitely run Propulsion Mod. And if you're not sure and you're dying to fires a lot, <laughs> damage control system is always good. Reload Mod is awesome. The concealment system, awesome. I think this is pretty standard. I'm actually even running Engine Boost Mod, which actually bumps my duration on the Engine Boost up a little bit, which makes it just that much more useful. This is a great ship, and I think it still is the steel ship to get. If you're unsure, and if you even remotely enjoy heavy cruiser or battleship playstyles, that I can't recommend Borgone enough. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.